Welcome back, True Believers, and all you Merry Marvelites, to a very exciting video because today is the very first episode of my official series of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy 101. So, if you've been around the channel for quite some time now, I'm sure you'd be fully aware as to what exactly my 101 series is, mainly relating to games such as Spider Man PS4, Marvel's Avengers, and most recently, Miles Morales. But just in case you're new around here, my 101 series is practically a one stop shop for everything that you need to know when it does come to brand new information pertaining to upcoming video games. And of course, for this instance, we are going to be breaking down all the recent developer information that was provided for the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Now, even though everyone at Eidos Montreal and Marvel Games gave us a boatload of information and footage for the Guardians game during the Square Enix Presents Showcase, there is actually quite a lot of info that was discussed on the official gaming website. However, if you do want to understand the gist as to what exactly the Guardians of the Galaxy game is, I still think the reveal trailer, developer interview, and gameplay demo did do a relatively good job of driving that point home. Although, thanks to one of the main newsletters on the Guardians gaming website, it does go on and provide a bit more of a deeper analysis as to what we can expect in the full game. And as the website goes on to describe, it's happening. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is coming October 26th, 2021 to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and PC. Developed by our team at Eidos Montreal in collaboration with Marvel Games, this fresh take in an all-new Guardians universe is a story-driven, single-player, third-person action-adventure game. Get ready to fire up Star-Lord's jet boots. This is going to be a wild ride. Imagine this, leading a group that's composed of the deadliest woman in the galaxy, a war hero slash convicted outlaw, a raccoon with a penchant for explosives, and his best friend that happens to be a powerful force of nature. You'll be at the center of everything, as you call the shots for your unpredictable team through combat, exploration, and the story itself. Tears will be shed, laughs will be had, and bad guys won't know what hit them. Also, the fate of the galaxy will be in your hands. No big deal. No pressure, right? So just to confirm right off the bat, and as the trailer fully showcases, is that the only main playable character that we will be able to control within this game is only Star-Lord himself. So I know that might make some people feel like that this is the Marvel's Star-Lord game instead of the Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy game, but rather than independently controlling each individual Guardian with their own particular moveset and combo varieties, I actually see this more towards a similar situation with the Mass Effect trilogy where you do play as Commander Shepard, where you primarily get to command your specific teammates instead of control them individually, while also being able to upgrade them throughout the duration of the game. And while I do understand the frustration that some people might have there, and I also personally would like to have played as this game's version of Rocket and Groot teaming up with some really sweet combos, I do think this allows Eidos to fully flesh out Star-Lord's complete moveset instead of expanding all their resources to try and simultaneously create different player movesets for different characters like what we previously saw within Marvel's Avengers. But moving on with this article relating to some of the story implementations, in our game, the Guardians have been together for less than a year and scour the galaxy in search of adventure and profit. Deep down, they're also trying to leave behind the memories of a galactic war that took place 12 years ago. This group of misfits is their hope for a fresh start. One day, they explore a restricted area of space filled with space debris in search of a valuable monster and hoping to make a killing. The Guardians being who they are, they goof around with a bet that's just crazy enough to end up going spectacularly sideways. Turns out this bet wasn't all that harmless, and they soon realize they've set off a chain reaction of catastrophic events. Under Star-Lord's approximate leadership, the Guardians will go from one end of the galaxy to the other to make things right, and ultimately become family. So I personally find that extremely interesting, knowing that this game's version of the Guardians has only been a team for less than a year, and they are going up against a really interesting threat that we may have not actually seen before in previous Guardians games or even previous Guardians media like that of the MCU films. And to expand upon that a bit further regarding the gameplay that we saw for Guardians, this slice of the game gives you a first look at how our combat system works. While you play as Star-Lord, the Guardians are constantly around you and fight autonomously. You can call on their abilities at all times, depending on the enemies you're facing and the strengths of each of the Guardians. It's up to you to make 
mix and match their signature attacks to defeat your opponents as efficiently, and of course, stylishly, as possible. You've also no doubt noticed the decisions you can take as the story progresses. When our dev team decided to put players in the jet boots of Star-Lord, the idea of dialogue choices came naturally. They're a way to personalize your experience of the game, and will lead to lighthearted and unexpected repercussions. Some moments of the adventure will play out differently depending on your decisions. And this is where the immediate comparisons towards the Telltale Guardians of the Galaxy game, as well as Mass Effect, come into play. If any of you saw my reaction to the Guardians game, which I will leave as a link in the description below, I pretty much think that this is going to be Marvel's version of Mass Effect, where we do have a very trippy action-adventure sci-fi single-player game with very encapsulating combat, decision-making, and most importantly, an RPG-style system where you are able to interact with certain characters in specific ways, while also determining the final conclusion of the game's story. The scene that stands out the most to me, and I'm sure all of you, is where Drax throws Rocket across that cavern, and it does indicate at the top left-hand corner in a very interesting way that Rocket is furious that you let Drax throw him, which almost seemingly mimics the Telltale style of game where the characters will remember a specific choice that you as the main character make throughout the narrative. And whether or not that specific decision will come back to haunt you during a certain point in the story is all up for the writers to go and input within the game's overall structure. However, I'm a massive fan of these types of games, and after recently completing the Mass Effect Legendary Edition trilogy, I am totally up for another awesome sci-fi RPG action-adventure single-player game, of course, now being in the Marvel Universe. Not to mention that there's surely going to be an awesome amount of tunes that we can all rock out to. And as it goes on to describe within the game's website, an all-star 80s soundtrack is going to be featured in the game. When the Guardians have their backs to the wall, there's nothing more likely to make them come out swinging than a sweet mixtape of Star-Lord's 80s favorites. Rock out to Stone Cold classics from his teenage years, including Iron Maiden, Kiss, New Kids on the Block, Rick Astley, and more. Raise the roof with Peter Quill's favorite rock band, Star-Lord, and their legendary album Space Rider. So not only do I find this to be a great way to further expand this game's lore, but I also love how it further showcases exactly what type of unique experience we can expect when playing this game. Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales also had a very unique soundtrack where it did include some very interesting orchestral synth pop album choices that do directly pertain to the characteristics of Miles Morales himself. And seeing that they're doing the exact same thing for Star-Lord in the Guardians of the Galaxy game is going to make his character feel a lot more real. Now even though this newsletter does a great job of further breaking down even more info about the game, there was actually a couple of replies on the official game's Twitter page that haven't been found anywhere else that do highlight some very interesting factors that are going to relieve a lot of people. The first of which is a feature that I think we all expected at this point, but it's nice to have at least official confirmation of it, is that Guardians of the Galaxy will in fact have a photo mode. But the news that I find the most important, especially regarding this game's single player action adventure structure, is that Guardians of the Galaxy will officially not have any microtransactions whatsoever. So even though there's always that potential that the game might include future DLC down the line after its launch, the overall game as a whole is going to be a fully completed product and that you can unlock every single suit within the game simply by playing it. So instead of monotonously spending $15 for a single skin within this game, you will simply be able to unlock them as you keep playing. And as a bonus, even though all this information that Eidos, Marvel, and Square provided in the span of one day is already enough to make your brain melt, they did officially confirm that the next Game Informer cover story is in fact going to relate to the Guardians themselves. So definitely expect more information to be unveiled from Game Informer relatively soon. But coming from me personally, I can guarantee that I'm already extremely satisfied with the current status of Guardians, and I'm very much looking forward to learning more about the game as we get closer to launch. And knowing that we only have a little over four months left of waiting until this game actually releases, I am very much looking forward to the next official showcase. And with all that said, everyone, that's a wrap on the first ever Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy 101 video, and please let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. What did you think about everything that we saw for Guardians of the Galaxy, and did this information give you a bit more reassurance as to what the final product could turn into, or possibly make you feel a bit more worried as to what exactly the direction is that developers are taking? Again, knowing that this title is not a live service game in any way, shape, or form, and instead is totally doubling down on the fully single player, third person, action adventure, and fully story driven experience, 
That completely reassures me as to what type of game we can expect to release at launch. Still, I do personally think some of the overall visuals and combat sequences did look a bit rough around the edges, so hopefully they can polish that up a bit before the game releases in October. But with all that said, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. Stay merry, Marvelites. Feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy and for more Guardians of the Galaxy 101 videos in the future. And until next time, peace out. <laughs>